Pleasant Valley Farm in Argyle, New York, and we have Paul and Sandy Arnold. Paul and Sandy, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do here, what you grow? Sure. Uh, we have uh, been on this land since 1988. We bought this farm just as land and put all the buildings up. And we've been doing winter production since 1992 and doing the winter growing in high tunnels since 2006. Uh, we do about five acres of vegetables, uh, all kinds of mixed vegetables, certified naturally grown, so we grow everything organically. And up until COVID, we did exclusively farmer's markets. And now we do online sales. Well, everything that, that uh, drives this farm is consumers and what the consumer's preference are and what we, what we know we're following, what they're wanting. So whatever gets planted is really that, that's a high demand for, for what they want. So we have three of these tunnels and one of these tunnels for the winter is planted to almost exclusively to spinach with a little bit of arugula on the far side. Uh, we have one with salad mix and some mustards and other Asian greens. And then we have uh, another tunnel with just Swiss chard, kale, Asian greens, some parsley. And uh, right now they've got some scallions. What we really are are winter growers and we get all these things planted by around October 1st in our tunnels and then they run all the way till the end of May. By the end of May, we're starting to switch over to summer growing, which is a little bit more subdued for us than, than the winter growing. This is what we're really doing. But we will plant uh, one tunnel to tomatoes. The other tunnels will have cucumbers, zucchini, yellow squash. Then all the other tunnel we let rest and just put in a cover crop. We're doing this rotation. So this was only spinach once every three years. And we transition uh, from our tunnels with all of the greens to our field greens in the spring. So we basically have greens year round. Great. So let's say we come to the end of a summer crop, whether that's a cover crop or a, a fruiting vegetable, and it's time to move into a greens crop. What does that soil management look like at that point? That's when the most major of uh, the soil preparations happen since the, for us winter is so important. And what we'll do is rip out all of the crop that's here. We will then come in and chisel plow and till. And then between those two things, we will add peat moss. And it's usually be around 25 or so bales of peat moss per tunnel, along with looking at our nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium levels and bringing them up. What we're usually putting down in here is uh, nitrogen at a rate of 200 pounds the acre, with also pushing our potassium up to around 600 pounds the acre. And that carries us through the winter and then somewhat into summer, which we'll add more when we put in tomatoes. We use fertilizers that are uh, non-animal based. So we stay away from the, the salt aspects in the fertilizers that we put in here. We use the non-Chilean fertilizers. We've also done steaming for several years in our tunnels, and that has really helped control the weeds, and we also think it's helped control diseases. Every year we take a soil test, if not twice a year, and see where it's heading. I think when we were starting to run out of, we didn't realize how much tomatoes were using, and we were running into uh, blossom end rots and all kinds of other green shoulders and things like that that were giving us problems, and then we started taking more soil tests and realizing, that we were low and we had to start adding more and more. When you realize we're planting spinach in October and we're harvesting it all the way till May, that's a lot of nutrients going out of this tunnel that we need to replace. And also the other thing with these tunnels is they're basically unheated. So we don't irrigate as often. If you had to irrigate more often, probably more nutrient uptake would happen. So we have higher nutrients in here because of that fact. So that, that brings us to an interesting question. One of the big differences between your high tunnel operations and others that we see is your approach to irrigation. So you wanna talk about that and how that differs from other farms? We know that some crops do better under drip irrigation. And so those things like kale and Swiss chard and the tomatoes and things like that are all under drip irrigation. So we have basically two systems in here. One is the drip and the other is we have the overhead irrigation above you know, it stays out of the way of the tractor's coming in and out, so we never have to move it. It's just two valves over with our um, setup where the water comes in, and we just turn on the valves and go. So this makes it easy to water. The coverage is good over the entire space. Great. So we have both systems, the overhead and drip, in all three tunnels, and just use it. And then decide which one is best for the crop. As we need it. 
I've always been a proponent of putting in the drip lines and we have done it in these beds before. Uh, Paul feels that the overhead is really nice. It does tend to wash down. If there were salts in here, it would wash it down into the soils better. Yeah, some crops like spinach is very sensitive to salt. So that if, you're, if you even get the slightest elevation, you're gonna see reduced yields. I'm curious, how often do you irrigate? Here it is mid late February and you, you irrigated this morning. So how often do you irrigate? How much do you irrigate? Okay, so the last time we irrigated was sometime in uh, mid-December. And the next time we irrigated was two weeks ago. The growth happened uh, up to mid-December and then from there they've been at a standstill. And then there's not much growth going on, so they're not using a whole lot of water and the soil temperatures are cold. So all of a sudden you hit February and mid-February and things start to grow and then the growth just starts exploding. So here we are, two weeks later, I need to irrigate again because the growth has uh, kept up with it. And do it on a sunny day so because we want it to dry off the leaves. Yeah, that's when we turn the fans on, we'll open the ends, but ventilation when we're irrigating, trying to get it back down to dry as fast as possible is a real priority. Paul and Sandy, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of row covers in a production system like this and how you've integrated those with other aspects of technology? We have over the years put uh, row covers on these tunnels because with that, it's not only the protection from extreme cold, but it's also getting more yield out of this. And so if you can keep it warmer at night and keep the ground temperatures up, you're gonna get more growth through better fertility. The soil is gonna do better. So we've used a double layer of P30 and it's one 42 foot wide piece that goes 150 feet. And the reason why we're using P30 is because P19 will just rip when you're only putting one person on each end. So it has to be thick enough to survive that going on and off every day that it is warm enough to take it on and off. Smart Farm Innovation has done our, our monet systems uh, that monitors the temperatures underneath the row cover and above that allows us to know in the morning about when it's warm enough for us to be able to come up here and take them off and we can watch when we should be putting them back on. So the row covers right now during this video are actually out the back door there because we roll them out when we do the irrigation in here to keep the row covers dry. That's part of, I think, growing the crops in the tunnels. Ventilation is really important. We have the end vents open all the time. Keep the fans going when we need to, keep the humidity down and it, it definitely reduces the diseases in here. So the great thing about all the technology that we have with the temperatures is it's all available right on our iPhones. We can tell the temperatures all the time. It can give us alarms. Uh, so it's a, it's a really great system. Paul and Sandy, are you willing to share with us roughly what your yield projections could be? And then looking at revenue based on price, what can a grower expect out of this square footage? Sure. Uh, we harvest approximately 60 pounds of spinach out of this tunnel every week. It can be up or down a little bit depending on what our needs are. We certainly have more than that now. The production is going to really pick up. Our spinach is sold about 0.29 pounds in a bag. We pre-bag it for our customers and we sell it for four dollars a bag. So we're making about fourteen dollars a pound. So just spinach and we also do cooking spinach which would be some seconds and it comes up to somewhere around $800 to $1,000 a week. Combined with the other two tunnels, we harvest approximately 200 pounds of greens a week out of all three tunnels, and it brings in around $2,000. Keep in mind, we are mostly uh, retail. These tunnels are 144 feet long. This tunnel is 30 feet wide. The other two tunnels are 34 feet wide. So each tunnel is approximately a tenth of an acre and the greens the salad mix that we do i think comes out to somewhere around two hundred thousand dollars an acre this year we have put in a trial here to look at the rate of nitrogen and spinach response to that rate of nitrogen so we have four different rates zero pounds per acre of nitrogen which is our control we have 65 pounds per acre we have 130 pounds per acre, which is close to the Cornell guidelines for spinach. And then we have 200 pounds per acre, which is something of a grower standard in the Northeast for winter spinach. The source of that nitrogen in this trial has been peanut meal. 
So we'd love to get your honest feedback on what you think about these different rates of nitrogen. I think when looking at, because right here is the trial bed that they did, you know, the rest of them is, is all under our management of what we put down, is uh, I think as you get toward the middle of the bed, it starts to show up the lack of nitrogen. As you go down, it starts to get a little greener and a little nicer and the yield starts to come up a little bit. What they're using for a nitrogen source is somewhat close to what we're using since we're using uh, North Country Organics ProGro, which is the non-Chilean 534, and that uses peanut or soybean meals as their nitrogen source. I think it's going to also be interesting to see what happens to this spinach over the next couple of months because we will be picking this until May. So whereas the 130 pound N actually looks pretty good and I think the yield is very close to the 200 pound N at this point, in another couple months we do find in the spring as the spinach really grows, we're picking it more and more and more, we want it to have enough nitrogen, we don't want to have to amend if we don't have to. So I think uh, the 200 pound, we've been really comfortable with that, doing that for many, many years with different trials. Great, thank you. Cornell Cooperative Extension has worked a lot with Pleasant Valley Farm over the years. It's been a fantastic partnership. We've certainly learned a lot from you folks. I want to thank Cooperative Extension for uh, working with us on this. Uh, we've done uh, many, many years of uh, trials and uh, have really enjoyed the partnership.